Hello, welcome to my easy to understand guide to the IT crowd, which is an optional set text sitcom for component two GCSE. Some schools study crime drama instead, so this is not going to be relevant to every GCSE student on the EDUCAS exam board. But if you are studying sitcoms, then you will need to know about the IT crowd as well as friends. This video is going to specifically focus on representation in the set episode, which is series four, episode two, the final countdown. I'm going to go through the episode in as much detail as I can, talking about how camera editing sound mise-en-scene creates representations about the characters. In this GCSE exam, you will get a video based clip from the set episode of the IT crowd. So this episode we're discussing today, the final countdown. So we're going to start with the very beginning of the set episode and we're going to go through uh, the kind of representations you're seeing on screen um, and I'm going to try and explain how they've used media language to create these representations. So it's important not to ignore the title sequence, it's the very first thing in the set episode and the title sequence does create representations even though they are animated. So we see kind of pixelated animated versions of the main characters, Roy, Moss and Jen. We immediately get to see um, some of these very iconic images in terms of costumes like Moss's glasses, um, the fact that Roy is always in a t-shirt and that Jen is always in a suit. So we're immediately getting some ideas about these characters just from their costumes in the title sequence. And then you factor in what they're doing. Um, Roy and Moss are destroying computers with like baseball bats and hammers which implies, I guess, A, they're not very good at their job or they don't like their job um, and that, or that it's something to do with technology and that they're very strange people. Um, you get Jen kind of appearing in the background and it looks as though she's trying to kind of lasso them, um, which gives us the impression that maybe she's trying to control them in some way. And they kind of fall down this hole in the animation and they fall all the way down into their office, which represents this idea that their, their office is in the basement and that they are kind of shunned or isolated from the rest of the staff in the building they're seen as unimportant because we can tell their office is low down in the basement and then we see them typing on computers and they type the title Moss types the title the IT crowd so we're getting this um, idea of computers and technology um, being important for these characters the first thing we see is Moss bless him running down the street um, so he, he looks at first glance like a kind of typical or archetypal nerd or geek character that we often see in other media products. So he's got the glasses and the shirt and the tie. Um, he's clutching a backpack. Um, and that adds to also not just the illusion, illusion of geekiness, but also adds to this illusion that he's quite childlike and immature, particularly when you factor in the fact that he's running and grinning at the same time, which is quite, you know, it's not a particularly mature thing to do to run down the street clutching your rucksack um, and, and smiling and grinning. Um, so um, he seems very youthful and immature as a result of this particular image. Then we get the shot of um, Jen and Roy in the office. And there's lots of things we can tell about the characters just by looking at them. For a start, we can see Jen in her suit. That adds to this illusion that she's quite professional, quite smart. Um, you know, she's dressed the way you'd expect someone to dress in an office environment. So it's clear perhaps that she is the more formal one out of these two characters, because by contrast, Roy is wearing a kind of quite scruffy looking crumpled cartoon or graphic type t-shirt which is very informal and casual and not the sort of thing you know you know you might wear to an office so it maybe implies that he's quite lazy or unprofessional or doesn't really take his job seriously the shots of the location behind them, we can see the set, add to the sense of character as well. So we see the place is filled with mess. You know, there's just junk everywhere, toys, um, kind of cartoons, posters, books, video games, computers. Um, so it kind of feels a bit like a junk shop, but it feels quite immature. A lot of it's kind of cartoony and toy based. So it adds to this illusion of kind of immaturity. Um, and it looks as though Roy fits in with his T-shirt. He looks as though he fits in. The fact that he's sitting down as well makes him look quite comfortable. So seeing him within the scene adds to this idea that this is his environment. And it makes Jen in her suit look as though she is the odd one out and doesn't fit in in this office. This idea of Jen not fitting in and not being part 
of this friendship between Roy and Moss is emphasised when Moss bursts into the office and says, I did it, I did it. Now, Roy obviously knows what Moss is talking about. Um, he doesn't need to ask. He already knows, which implies that they've talked about it and they've discussed it, suggesting they're friends. Jen doesn't have a clue. She keeps having to ask them, what's going on? What are you so excited about? Which implies that she's not part of their little friendship group, which adds to her um, representation of being isolated from the two men in the office. It's very clear from the set episode that Moss is super intelligent. We get that very clearly communicated to us, not just by the glasses, which are kind of a superficial accessory that often signifies intelligence in media products, but also by the way he acts and behaves on the set of Countdown. We get this ticking clock, which adds the idea of pressure and the fact that the competition is on and you get the scribbling man next to him trying to come up with an answer. And it's about this kind of, you know, people having to work quite hard. But Moss's body language is very laid back. He's very calm. He's sitting there with his kind of arms on the table, looking around as though he doesn't need to work for this. He doesn't need to even think he's already got an answer. At one point, he picks up his cup and casually drinks from it. I mean, it adds to the humour, but it also adds to our understanding that he's super clever and doesn't need to work to be intelligent. It just naturally comes to him. The brown and white checkered shirt is quite kind of dull, boring, unfashionable colours. He's wearing a tie as well, which is quite formal um, and shows that he is, um, you know, he's not very laid back maybe, but he is um, quite formal and professional. Um, and the fact that it is all brown as well, it kind of goes into this idea that he's not really interested in trends. The other characters in the scene, their reactions also help us to understand how intelligent Moss is. The host actually says, good heavens, really? And, you know, you can see the shock on his face. Um, and then uh, the other host, Rachel, um, turns to Moss and sort of says, you know, somebody, you're quite remarkable, really, and discusses his ability to get really um, long words in the competition. And so it's the kind of dialogue as well and the other characters' facial expressions, which add to our understanding that Moss is, is super intelligent. In the next scene, we see Roy on the toilet. Um, quite a bizarre scene anyway for a TV programme, which adds to the humour. And the fact that he's reading on the toilet also adds to this idea that he's maybe a little bit immature um, because we often associate that as being something quite youthful to do. The settings behind him also help to construct ideas about him as a character. So the toilet roll to his um, right hand side is basically empty. There's hardly any toilet roll left on it, but the toilet rolls are just piled up behind him. No one's changed the toilet roll. There's what looks like maybe shaving can on the side and there's like foam dripping down the can. So it, it's quite messy and there's magazines everywhere. So again, it adds to this idea that he may be quite a lazy, immature character, um, a bit of a kind of bachelor, like doesn't necessarily take care of himself or his, his home. The camera puts us on an eye level with Roy, which um, helps us to feel like we can identify with him and puts us kind of on his level so that we can feel as though uh, we can empathise with what he's going to. And we get this low angle camera shot looking up um, past Roy at the window cleaner, which again adds to the humour, but it uh, represents the window cleaner as having more power and importance and dominance because he's up high in the shot looking down on Roy. Um, we see Roy's double take, which adds to the humour. It adds to his representation as being quite shocked and offended that this man is there. When Moss can't understand what the window cleaner is saying, we can kind of empathise with him because we can't really understand what the window cleaner is saying either. Um, and when he's kind of saying, I don't know what you're saying, and he looks confused and he's just nodding and saying, yeah, OK, whatever. Um, it's kind of representing him as being quite um, casual and laid back. He doesn't really know how to deal with social situations. He can't. He's not confident enough to say get out of my house you're a complete stranger um so it adds to this idea that perhaps he lacks a bit of confidence socially in the next scene we really get the impression that moss is still quite youthful and immature um it, he's very clear he lives with his mum he mentions at our house and he talks about his mum um and um so that makes him seem quite childlike um and 
he also talks about them never opening their front door. It's quite a bizarre thing. You know, it it's, seems strange perhaps to us and to the other characters, this idea that you just never answer your front door. Um, and it perhaps adds to this representation that Moss is a bit strange and that perhaps his whole family is a bit odd or different and they don't necessarily follow social norms points about dog poo and knives um, help to see that he is sometimes quite scared of aggressive people, um, that he's not a very confident person either, and that he's quite weak and vulnerable. And so his decision not to open the door is perhaps about protecting himself. Um, and that adds to his kind of uh, uh, vulnerability as a character. Jen talks about having to go to the heads of department meetings and she wants to zone out at them and that she's been avoiding them by making excuses so far. This adds to the representation of her as being somebody who, while she tries to look professional with her suit, is perhaps not very professional underneath. She doesn't necessarily care about her job um, or the people at her work. Um, she just wants to give the impression um, that she does a good job. OK, that was the end of part one of my guide to the IT crowd. Please make sure you check out part two.